Do you know how to read your heart numbers? Not the blood pressure numbers, the 120 over 80 everybody knows. I'm talking about your heart rate, the number you may be ignoring because you don't know what to do with this. Stay with me, it's going to be interesting. Hi, I'm Dorothy Adamiak, former board certified naturopathic doctor, author of five books, and the creator of Youthic Proportions Blueprints, so you can finally get an A in health. When you take your blood pressure, you get three numbers. The top, which is your systolic, the bottom, which is your diastolic, and the heart rate. The last number is just as important as the other two. You'll be amazed what it can tell you. First, let me explain what it is. Heart rate tells you how many times the heart beats in one minute. So when the heart rate is 72, it means it did 72 pumps in 60 seconds but it's not any random number. It's an important indicator. The heart's job is to pump blood. The blood's job is to deliver oxygen to the cells. When you put these two sentences together, you can see that ultimately it's the heart's job to supervise oxygen delivery. If you ever managed a business, you may be familiar with just-in-time inventory system. Just-in-time requires extreme precision as to timing of the delivery. Every item in such system must be delivered exactly at the time when the item is to be used. Not a week before, not a week after. Just-in-time inventory is a must for systems that don't use depositories. And such is the case with the body. Our cells don't store oxygen, hence the cells must receive oxygen exactly at the time when they are about to use it. Not a minute earlier, not a minute later. The timing is crucial because either excess or lack of oxygen can have devastating consequences. Proper timing is easy if everything remains the same, but the problem is that our cells change their needs all the time. Their oxygen requirements change depending whether you sleep, eat, talk, walk, or sip margarita. And because of that ever-changing cell needs, your heart rate cannot stay the same. If you see your heart rate keeping steady all the time, either check your blood pressure monitor or check yourself thoroughly. Something is off. A perfect example of how heart rate adjusts to oxygen needs is exercise. If you've ever done it, you know, the harder you work out, the higher your heart rate goes. In other words, the higher the needs for oxygen, the faster the heart will pump. Do you have an aha moment now? Your heart rate number is a simplified marker for oxygen needs. If your heart rate is consistently high, your oxygen needs may be higher than normal, and that means you may be either anemic or losing blood. But let's go back to exercise. It happens that the heart rate does not just go up when you use your muscles. It can go up also while you do nothing physical. But why would the heart go nuts if you aren't even getting up from a chair? That happens with stress. Emotional stress frequently precedes physical exertion. So when you get excited, the heart pumps harder, just in case. You never know. If you get scared by a noise in the bushes, the heart might be right. Here comes mama bear. And just like that, you have to run for your life. So every time the body senses a danger, it will make sure you can either fight or flight. Do you get scared easily? Test your heart rate during an important meeting at work, when a cop stops you for a traffic violation, or when you see an unexpected balance on your credit card. The higher the spike, the less resilient you are to stress. In other words, if you aren't bothered by such life events, congratulations, your nerves are made of steel. And that means you're likely to live longer. Stress shortens lifespan by quite a bit. So if you want to expand your lifestyle, you need to lower your stress. And by that, I mean prevent those unnecessary heart spikes. Those only wear your heart off and more. Imagine you're under stress. The heart pumps wild. What, what do you think happens when the cells are flooded with oxygen, but they don't use it? I would say oxidative stress. You know, you don't want oxidative stress. It's bad for you. Oxidative stress makes you age faster, contributes to blocked arteries, 
get you closer to diabetes and inches you towards dementia. The only time you want your heart pump harder is when you actually do some physical stuff like exercise. Physical activity has been shown to extend lifespan, reduce cardiovascular and diabetic risk, and sharpen your mind. So get this, faster heart rate is good when you move about or have a fever, but not when you're sitting still, worry, get overdosed on caffeine, or swallowed some pills that make you excited. So how much should the perfect heart rate be? If you aren't on medication and without any heart defect, you should expect your heart rate to be somewhere between 50 and 70 beats per minute. That's when you're sitting still and doing nothing. If you see it above 70, you may want to lower it down. Continuous heart rate wears the heart down and may even contribute to hypertension. How do you get the numbers down? Easy, breathe. A few deep, slow breaths will get the numbers down in short time. Remember, it's all about oxygen. So do some deep breathing every time your heart rate goes up for no reason. Close your eyes and breathe slowly as if nothing else matters. You might be surprised how fast your numbers go down. And now here's a caveat. Never ever slow your heart rate while compromising your oxygen delivery. It would be silly to reduce oxidative stress only to end up with hypoxia. If you're on medication that slows your heart rate but leaves you fatigued, brain fogged, and unable to exercise, you may want to consider a different approach to your health. And if you aren't on meds but instead eat good and exercise, you too may want to pay attention to your heart rate. If you're stuck with extra pounds and feeling tired frequently, maybe you are over-exercising. This may especially be true if you exercise every day. Over-exercising can lead to hormonal imbalance, drop in performance, insomnia, irritability, and even mess up with your physique. So please do yourself a favor. Periodically check your heart rate. Do it this way. Measure your resting heart rate first thing in the morning before you get out of bed. Do it for a few days, then stop exercising for another few days or maybe a week and test your resting heart rate again. If the heart rate goes down by at least five points, you were over exercising. In such case, you need to adjust your exercise schedule because when it comes to exercise, more is not better. Exercising videos are coming. Subscribe to take advantage. Heart rate is a fantastic indicator of stress and oxygen needs, so don't ignore it from now on. If you are unsure how to take accurate readings, do the following. Find a pulsing spot at your wrist or at the side of the neck. Don't squeeze it too hard. Squeeze it only to feel the pulse. Count the beats for one full minute. That's it. That's your heart rate. It's that simple. Just in case you need a quick recap, here it is. Know your heart rate fluctuations during the day. This is your stress and stress resilient indicator. Know your morning resting heart rate. This can help you adjust your exercise schedule. Keep your resting heart rate between 50 and 70. If higher, lower your heart rate through breathing or other relaxation techniques. Don't let your meds compromise your oxygen status. Fatigue may be the first sign. If you're still with me, here is a hint for a healthy heart rate. Fatty fish and chocolate. Try it. Till next time.